Welcome back. Members of Congress head back to work on Monday and on the agenda next week, the next complicated, deeply divisive and critically important issue they're facing, immigration reform. Taking the lead, the so-called Gang of Eight Senators, a bipartisan group focused on the issue, which both parties say is critical for both the nation and their own political success. That group has the baseline for a deal, new visa programs to bring in more foreign workers, requiring employers to check the legal status of workers, beefed up security at the border, and a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants already here, albeit a path that would take 13 to 20 years to get an undocumented immigrant all the way to citizenship. But as always, there are loads of potential problems. Democrats want to add language granting visas to foreign same-sex spouses of American citizens. That could be a non-starter for Republicans. I said could be, really would be. There are also questions from the right. Will the border be secure enough? Is that path to citizenship just slow playing amnesty? And no matter what the Senate does, can any bill possibly pass the Republican controlled House? Taking the lead for the GOP, Florida Senator Marco Rubio, who says he supports that base deal crafted by the Gang of Eight. He's one of the eight. But he says in its current form, it won't pass the House, particularly when it comes to border security. If you're looking for a groundswell of public opinion to push the issue one way or another, you are out of luck. The president getting a split grade of his handling of the issue when it comes to those who the public trusts more. But despite the potential hiccups and that split among voters, one member of that Gang of Eight, New York's Chuck Schumer, he still sounds optimistic about immigration reform. We have a broad coalition, bipartisan, led by Senator McCain and myself, and we're coming together on the middle. I believe this. I believe Americans will be, have support common sense solutions to future immigration, future legal immigration, and the 11 million who are living in the shadows only if there's a, uh, a, a pathway to citizenship that's earned, not just given, and only if we make sure there aren't future waves of illegal immigration crossing our border. And for more on this topic, we have doubled the size of our panel. We begin with Marcella Berland. She is the president of Latin Insights, a communications and research-based solutions firm specializing in the U.S. Hispanic market and Latin America. Welcome back. And welcome back to Richard St. Paul, Republican strategist and former vice chair for the National Black Republic Republican Association. Welcome. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. All right, so here's the confusing part. Both parties say they want immigration reform. Both parties say it's important for the country and for their own political futures. So naturally, the odds are against a deal getting done, right? <laughs> well, when there are two parties and different interests, there's always some trouble. We know that the Republicans traditionally have been against it, and now, because of what happened in the last election, they feel the pressure to go and say, OK, we want to do it. But one thing is to say we want to do it, and another thing is to actually do it. You know, hopefully now, because of what happened in the last presidential election, that will be an incentive, whether or not they believe it's necessary or not. But we want to see what happens. Richard, how do you... How do you convince somebody who's predisposed not to like the idea of a path to citizenship that it's not amnesty? Or is that just, is, is that, will those always be wedded in, in somebody's mind? Well, first let me say Republicans haven't been opposed to immigration. It's the right immigration bill that has to come through. Remember Reagan passed an immigration bill in 86. George Bush tried to push through an immigration bill, but mm -hmm. didn't pass because it wasn't the right type of immigration bill. And what you see Mark Rubio doing is stepping back and saying, let me get put forward the right immigration bill, something that we don't have to come back here 10 years from now and reform. Because we've seen the type of issues that immigration, illegal immigration causes. It, it hurts the economy, especially if you have people who are uh, here illegally and who are tapping the government resources for, for benefits. Uh, it is a, ultimately, immigration is an economic issue. And so that's why, especially in a time when unemployment is so high, especially in a time where we just came out of a recession, this is an economic issue, and that's why it's going so slow. In addition to that, as Chuck Schumer hit the nail on the head, saying, you know, we want to make sure that we don't have floods and floods again of immigrants coming in here in this, this country illegally. Are you saying that an influx of immigrants would hurt the economy? Uh, illegal immigrants, yes. But I think that's the main reason, economic re reason, is the main reason why we should go ahead and have an immigration law. Because the problem we have now is that we have 11 or 12 million people that are not going to disappear. The problem is here. So you need to find a solution, either you like it or not. So by not finding a solution, by not bringing them into the system, you're creating more economic problems, right. in my view. So we need to bring them in so they start paying taxes. Multiply 11 million or 12 million by 1,000, by 5,000, and you see the number you get. That's what we're going 
going to get every year with the taxes they're going to be paying. Right. We need to have, I agree, we, we will have an immigration policy, no doubt about it. But it's got, it's got to do a few things. It's got to tighten border security. It, it has to allow for foreign visas, so we have uh, high-tech uh, individuals from foreign countries in here who are, are going to help the economy. That's the part that helps the economy. The part that I said takes away from the economy is if you have people drain the system. And I think that's a key that uh, Mark Rubio is looking at is saying, okay, we illegal immigrants should not have public uh, benefits. Um, and so the comprehensive immigration reform will come through. It will happen. It must happen for the sake of both parties. But Mike, Michael, if you have people who are outside of the system mm -hmm. right now, isn't that bad for the economy? I mean, you, you, it's harder to tax them. It's Two points. Go ahead. One, I love your tie, but I disagree with most everything you just said. I'm glad. And I, and you, I, and you, I. You, you, you <laughs> were in trouble when he started with, this I like is, your this tie. This is going to be a good conversation. And, you know, I, I think we should revisit the underlying premise, which is Democrats and Republicans both want this to happen. They do want it to happen, but for very different reasons. Democrats want it to happen because it's their base, their people, are saying we need to, as a party, push for comprehensive immigration reform. Republicans need this because they keep losing. Leaving the House aside, which is just extreme after decades and decades of reapportionment, that the Republicans don't have the Senate, they couldn't win the White House, and they were just destroyed in the polls with these immigrant communities who can vote. Democrats are doing it because they believe it's the right thing to do. Republicans are just desperate to try something. But on the other issue, you say the economy, which economy? There's a cash economy, mm. there's a stunted cash economy, there's our formal economy. In the formal economy, we're not accounting for these things, but in our cash economy, uh, it, it's booming. Illegal immigration does not hurt New America's cash economy. Also, there is a problem that people confuse constantly with the type of immigrants. There are two types exactly. of immigrants. They, they are the ones that come undocumented, mm -hmm. which, you know, they're one type of labor. And then there are the ones that are highly educated that come to this country. Like, you know, I didn't come undocumented. Mm -hmm. I came here with a full rise mm -hmm. scholarship. Mm -hmm. And those people are going to continue to come and contribute to the economy. But we have. 12, nearly 12 million people, you know, say 11, but mm -hmm. I believe it's close to 12, that are here already. It's not a question of where we're going to let them go, we're going to let them, they are here. So what are we going to do with you those people? That's a very well, important point, which know, is a, we're discussing border security and Hispanic immigrants coming illegally from South America and Latin America. And then there's, you know, high, highly educated, high-tech immigrants that are coming here on visas from Arab countries, from South Asia, from, from Asian India, countries, yeah. from the rest from of the, the world, world, and from India. But TV Latin America, too. And from Latin, exactly. And I certainly make the distinction between, the, I certainly did make the distinction between the two. And, you know, there, there's also another category. There are the uh, folks who came here illegally who are the children, what we call the dreamers. Uh, and I'm That's an attorney. Fair. I've represented uh, uh, someone who came here at one. He went through public school in, in, in New Rochelle and, you know, got in trouble and he was about to get deported. That's a separate okay, category. That, that, I, needs to that move. I agree with. They need that to move forward a lot ground. quicker <laughs> than, the, than, let's say, his parents who came here mm -hmm. illegally and knew, and knew what they were doing. And then there are the issues with the legal immigration system as we have now where children are not being united with parents after 10, 12 years. One more uh, question just on the, on the raw politics of it all. And uh, Dominic, I'll start with you. Funny you mentioned the politics of it. That's where I was going. Hilarious. <laughs> Re Republicans, especially for this show, Republicans say we need to do immigration reform because we need Hispanic voters. Right. Will that, will that work? I mean, are, won't voters still be keeping score on this, knowing that, boy, we might have been able to get immigration reform five years ago, ten years ago, had it not been for one party that was being more intransigent? I don't know if it'll work, but people, voters are not stupid, Andrew. People can see things in front of them. And the bottom line here, no matter, you know, everybody can say they want immigration <laughs> reform, is what both parties are saying. I don't think the House is going to sign off on this simply because they don't want Obama to have any additional achievement on his belt. The bottom line, they don't want this president to have any more success. That's the bottom line. You can cut this any way you want to, but on any major issue that's coming up, going forward, you're going to face major opposition in the Senate, but in the House, because they don't want Obama to get credit for it. I, I, if, I say, if this passes the Senate and gets killed in the House, is it another oh, moment for the GOP? Well, without a doubt, it, it is egg on the face. And I think that there's that Mark Rubio and the gang A stepping back and trying to 
put forward a bill that's going to pass the House. That's what's taking so long to do. And Obama has largely stayed out of this mm -hmm. recently, the immigration debate, rightfully so, because he realizes if he steps in, he's going to kill the whole thing. But I would clarify one point Dominic made, which is this is not just about President Obama. It's already about the next presidential election and what the Democrats get to do with their nominees. Fair. And yeah. finally, and we're, we're just about out of time, but Marcella, are you more optimistic for immigration reform than you were, let's say, six months ago before the election? Uh, well, I saw it six months ago because we were looking at the numbers. I did several polls with Latinos, and I knew the Republicans were going to get killed. So I knew that something was going to happen. I'm more optimistic because I think that hopefully uh, Republicans will be able to see that this is something very important for the country and for the party. I don't care why they voted, but I want it to pass. So hopefully they'll do the right thing and we can leave this behind because it's not a question of border, it's a question of we have these people here, so we need to find a solution. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. Marcella, thank you so much thank as always so for much, joining Andrew. us. Really appreciate it. Up next, has Syria crossed the red line? And if so, do Americans have the stomach for involvement in yet another conflict in the Middle East? We'll get to that next. Stay with us.